University Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. Hello, the gloves are about to come off, metaphorically speaking, at least we hope it's a metaphor, as Cambridge and Oxford meet in about to decide another place in the second round. While the winners go through automatically, the losers could earn the chance to compete in the playoffs if their score warrants it. Now, Clare College is the second oldest in Cambridge and is named after the granddaughter of Edward I, Lady Elizabeth de Clare, who, after the death of her third husband, took a vow of chastity and channeled her energies into higher education, the sensible woman. What was originally a foundation for 20 fellows and 10 poor scholars is now a college of around 650, who in the past have included the poet Siegfried Sassoon, the novelist and biographer Peter Ackroyd, and the naturalist and broadcaster David Attenborough. The average age of tonight's team is 22. Let's meet them. Hi, I'm Anish Naik. I'm studying for a PhD in astrophysics, and I'm from Enfield in North London. Hi, I'm Matt Nixon. I'm from Belfast, and I'm studying for a master's in astrophysics. This is their captain. Hello, I'm Andrew Gurr. I'm from Basingstoke in Hampshire, and I'm reading Law. Hi, I'm Elijah Granite. I'm from sunny San Diego, California, and I'm reading for a master's in politics. Hartford College, Oxford, traces its origins to a 13th century institution and now houses around 600 students. Alumni include John Dunn, Jonathan Swift and Evelyn Waugh, who, while a student, claimed, I do no work here and don't go to chapel. He did, however, create one of the most enduring images of student life when, in Brideshead Revisited, he placed Charles Ryder in Hartford and had Sebastian Flight initiate their friendship by vomiting into his rooms, which are now occupied by the college bursary. With an average age of 21, let's meet the Hartford team. Hi, I'm Steffi. I'm from South London, and I'm studying biology. Hi, I'm Pat Taylor, originally from Warwick, and I'm studying physics. And this is their captain. Hi, I'm Richard Tudor. I'm from Savage in the West Midlands, and I'm reading history. Hi, I'm Chris. I'm from Orpington in South London, and I'm studying English literature. Well, the rules are the same as ever. Starter questions are solo efforts and are worth 10 points, and bonuses are team efforts worth 15. Right. Fingers on the buzzers. Here's your first start of a 10. Which US city is the setting of television drama series developed by David Simon and Brian Fuller? Clan Granite. Baltimore. Correct. <laughs> you get a set of bonuses on words with a shared suffix. Firstly, from a Latin term, the sense of which is that spoken by the gods, what term describes a person who believes that all things happen by inevitable necessity, undetermined by human action? Determinist? Yes, I'm okay. okay. Determinist. No, it's a fatalist. From the Latin for a person who fights with their fists, what term means a practitioner of the art of boxing? Pugilist. Correct. Originally applied to the writers of the four Gospels, what term is now commonly used to describe a zealous advocate of a cause or promulgator of a doctrine. Evangelist. Correct. Ten points for this. <laughs> what three letters begin words meaning a component of an engine that blends air and fuel, a flexible tissue in the articulating surfaces of joints, and an eponymous uh, cycle... Hartford Tudor. C-A-R. Correct. <laughs> Cardiacal, cartilage and so on. So you get a set of bonuses on physics, Hartford, for your first outing. In each case, give the single word that completes the extract from a Nobel Prize citation. Firstly, to Lord Rayleigh in 1904, for his investigations of the densities of the most important gases and for his discovery of which noble gas? It's Helium? No, it's argon. Secondly, to James Chadwick in 1935 for the discovery of which subatomic particle? Maybe a muon? No, it's the neutron. And finally, to Ernst Rusker in 1986 for his fundamental work in electron optics and for the design of the first electron what? Mm -hmm. 
microscope. Yeah, microscope. Correct. Ten points for this. Which of T.S. Eliot's poems is prefaced by a short note explaining that its title refers to a small group of rocks with a beacon off the northeast coast of Cape... Claire Nixon. The Wasteland? No, I'm going to find you five points, too. Uh, with a beacon off the northeast coast of Cape Ann, Massachusetts. In 1943, it was published with three other poems under the collective title Four Quartets. Hartford Page. Little Rock. That's the Dry Salvages. Right, ten points for this starter question. Fitz Empress was a byname of which king of England, sometimes described as the father of English common law. His reign was marked by quarrels with his sons, his wife, and the Archbishop of Canterbury, Thomas Beckett. Uh, Hartford Tudor. Uh, Henry II. Correct. <laughs> right, your bonuses are on a philosophy now, Hartford. Its name derived from the Greek for delight. In which doctrine of ethics is one's own pleasure regarded as the chief good or the proper end of action? Hedonism. Uh, hedonism. Correct. Described as a psychological hedonist, which English philosopher claimed in a 1789 work on morals and legislation that pain and pleasure determine what we do? Maybe it's pain, actually, because he was around. Um, yeah. I don't know if it's philosophy, but should we guess it? Yeah. I probably taught myself out of Bentham, but should we give pain? Uh, pain? No, it's Jeremy Bentham. Oh, damn. And finally, in a work of 1821, which English essayist wrote, Gentlemen, I am a hedonist, and if you must know why I take opium, that's the reason why. Coleridge. Yeah. Loved opium, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, Coleridge. That was Thomas de Quincey. Sorry. We're going to take a picture question now. For your picture starter, you'll see three old English kennings. That is, metaphorical compounds used poetically in place of simpler words, such as life liquid for blood. For ten points, I want the short, modern English word that's conventionally used to translate all three. Hartford Page. C. C is correct, yes. Well done. <laughs> this is dark is the key. Right, you get a set now of bonuses, three more sets of kennings, and again, in each case, you need to work out the single modern English word that would conventionally be used to translate each set. Firstly, I need a four-letter word here. OK, sure. Chris, it's head. Should we just guess it? Uh, head? No, that's the body. Oh. OK. Bone house is the clue. Secondly, another four letter word, please. Boat. Correct, yes. yes. And finally, <laughs> yes. a three letter word. Okay. Uh, sun. Sun is correct, yes. Well, can be. Right, ten points for this. Submitted in 1900, Albert Einstein's first scientific paper was on the subject of what phenomenon? Described as... Claire Mike. Uh, Brownian motion. No. Described as the rise or depression... You lose five points. Rise or depression of a liquid in a small passage, such as a tube of small cross-sectional area. Uh, Hartford Taylor. Capillary action. Capillarity is correct, yes. Your bonuses are on creative works of the 1990s, cited by the journalist Samira Ahmed as examples of why it was a brilliant decade to be a young woman. Firstly, together with Annie Lennox's Diva and Madonna's Blonde Ambition Tour, it put female desire at the heart of mass popular entertainment. These words refer to Ingenue, an album by which Canadian singer-songwriter? Is it Alanis Morissette? Yeah, yeah. She's, yeah. she's yeah. Alanis Morissette. Uh, Alanis Morissette? No, it's KD Lang. Cutthroat Island and A League of Their Own starred which actor? In 2004, she founded an institute to investigate issues of gender in media. Sorry, pass. It's Gina Davis. Quote, the female agent was the calm, rational sceptic and the bloke was the superstitious, emotional one. These words refer to which television series first broadcast in 1993? Oh, God. 
Sorry, pass again. It's the X Files. Ten points for this. Give both the title and the author promptly if you buzz. Which memoir of 2017 opens with the author's admission that she imagined herself to be... Claire Nixon. What happened, Hillary Clinton? Correct. Nice. <laughs> right, your bonuses are on poems collected in the Exeter book, the largest extant codex of Old English poetry. The poems firstly known as Juliana and the Ascension are generally attributed to which Anglo-Saxon poet? He's one of a very few to be known by name, having signed his work using runic characters. Hill. Hill? No, it's Kinnerwolf. <laughs> Secondly, what two-word Latin term is often used to describe the poems known as Deo, the Ruin and the Wanderer, which share a theme of transience? The term refers to a rhetorical device whereby a speaker asks what became of past heroes. Nominate Nike. Quo Vadis? No, that means something completely different. <laughs> ubi sunt. <laughs> and finally, the lament for the Rohirrim is an ubi sunt verse that closely paraphrases the Wanderer. Give the precise volume of the 1954 work in which it appears, along with the author. Uh, the Return of the King. No, it's The Two Towers by oh, J.R.R. No. Tolkien. Right, ten points for this. What single word links the English name of a gulf in the Sea of Okhotsk, the comic opera by Gilbert and Sullivan, subtitled Bunthorn's Bride, an album of 2004 by George Michael, and an alternate name for the card game Solitaire? Claire Nixon. Patience. Patience is correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on Australian State. Firstly, crossed by the thousand-mile-long Canning Stock Route, the Great Sandy Desert lies largely within which Australian state? Western Australia. Yeah, I don't know. I think that Australia. Western Australia. Correct. In metres, how high is Mount Meharry, the highest point in Western Australia? It's lower than Ben Nevis, but higher than Snowdon. You can have 100 metres either way. Is that right? Uh, 1,100. Um... I can't accept that. It's not quite close enough. It's 1,250. <laughs> and finally, Mount Meharry is in the Hammersley Ranges, the site of major mines of which metal? The ore is transported by rail to ports such as Dampier. I think there are gold mines in Australia. There are gold mines. Gold. Let me go for it. gold. No, it's iron. No. Ten points for this. In the title of a 1993 book, the US sociologist George Ritzer coined what term? to describe a process of rationalisation involving the principles and characteristics of an eponymous fast-food restaurant coming to dominate society. Claire Granite. McDonaldization. Correct. <laughs> These bonuses, Claire, are on an immunological reaction. What type of reaction results in the formation of a visible aggregate after a soluble antibody is mixed with a particulate antigen? Do you have any idea? Histamine response? That sounds like a thing. Uh, histamine response. No, it's a glutination. And secondly, using dead bacteria as the antigen against the serum of suspected patients, the Weedal agglutination test aids in the diagnosis of which highly contagious fever? It's usually spread by contaminated food or water. Salmonella. Um, no, cholera sounds better to me. Yeah. Cholera? No, it's typhoid fever. The agglutination properties of which cells are used to determine a person's blood type? What cell? Red. I mean, why not? Red. Red blood cells is Good. correct. <laughs> <it's recited. laughs> right, we're going to take a music round. For your music starter, you'll hear a piece of popular music. Ten points if you can give me the usual two-word title of the song. And I'm gonna be high... Claire Gurr. Rocket Man. Rocket Man is correct, oh. yes. <laughs> That featured on the personal playlist that Tim Peake made for his Principia mission, as revealed by the European Space Agency. Your music bonuses are three more songs from that playlist. This time I want the name of the band in each case. Firstly... When your world is full of strange arrangements... Oh, I don't think it's Duran Duran, but... Duran Duran. Duran Duran.
No, that's ABC, the look of love. And secondly... The Beach Boys. No, that was The Who. Oh, and finally... R.E.M. R.E.M. Man on the Moon, yes. Right, ten points for this. The Oddball's Oddball was an appellation given by Time magazine to which prolific mathematician? Born in Budapest in 19... Hartford Tudor. Uh, Erdős. Paul Erdős is correct, yes. <laughs> right, you get a set of bonuses this time. On the deaths of Roman emperors, Hartford College. Which emperor died in the Danubian provinces, possibly in modern-day Vienna, in 180? The last of the five good emperors, he was a prominent Stoic philosopher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 OK. Marcus Aurelius. Correct. Which Roman emperor died at York in 211? He came to power during a civil war and founded a dynasty that lasted until 235. Yeah, I was thinking that was wrong. Was thinking yeah. Septimius, yeah. Uh, Septimius Severus. Correct. And finally, having undertaken a major reorganisation of the empire, which emperor abdicated in 305 and died near split on the Adriatic 11 years later? Yeah. Diocletian. Correct. Ten points for this. Nine years before the Great Fire of London, the Great Fire of Myreki devastated which major city with great loss of life? In 1923, the same city suffered in the Great Kanto Earthquake. Hartford yeah. Page. Tokyo. Tokyo is correct, yes. <laughs> Your bonuses this time are on indie rock bands, Hartford. In each case, give the band's name from the clue or clues. Firstly, the name of which band might also refer to the second and fourth horizontal bands of the flag of North Korea? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the White Stripes. Correct. The director of the films Nixon and Snowden and ornamental plants with numerous cultivars, including Rabelais, Rubens and Rosie O'Donnell. Stone Roses. It's Oliver Stone. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, Stone Roses. Correct. And finally, the region between 67.5 and 90 degrees north and mammals whose species include the langurs and the marmosets. Arctic monkeys. <laughs> Arctic monkeys is correct. <laughs> right, ten points for this, prompting much speculation over the writer's true identity. Under what pseudonym? Were the... Claire Granite. Ferrante. The full name? Elena Ferrante. Correct. Oh, my <laughs> <laughs> Right, your bonus is... Clare College are on the 16th century Indian poetess and mystic Meera Bai. Meera Bai was born a princess and was married in 1516 to Bhuj Raj, the crown prince of Moa, in which modern day state of northwestern India? Rajasthan. Correct. According to legend, which Mughal ruler disguised himself as a commoner in order to hear Meera Bai sing? Yeah, I think that's right. Akbar the Great. Correct. Mirabai is best known for her lyrical devotional songs to which popular deity? A prominent figure in the Mahabharata. Um, Vishnu. Wrong, isn't it? No, he's not in the Mahabharata. Try Arjun. Arjun. No, it's Krishna. Ten points for this. Named after a Swedish anatomist and sometimes likened to growth rings on a tree. <laughs> the... Claire Nike. Uh, Linnaeus. No, I'm afraid you're going to lose five points. The striae of Retzius are found on which parts of the human body? Uh, Hartford Woodgate. Uh, muscles? Heart muscle? Nope, they're found on the teeth. Right, ten points for this. Its name meaning our land in a local language. What became the newest, largest and northernmost Canadian territory? Claire Nixon. Um, none of it. No. I'll accept that, but only because I'm being kind. <laughs> <laughs> Right, set of bonuses for you on names in the solar system associated with the idea of heaven or paradise. One of the largest impact features in the solar system, the Valhalla Crater, is on which moon of Jupiter, the planet's second largest? Can I need you working on it? I think Europa's the next largest. You sure? Europa. 
No, it's Callisto. Mm -hmm. After a paradise in ancient Egyptian mythology, the geologically diverse region of Aru is on which large moon of the outer solar system? Triton. 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 No, it's Titan. And finally, Elysium Planitia and Elysium Mons are a plane and an extinct volcano on which planet? This is Mars. Mars. Mars is correct. We're going to take another picture round. For your picture starter, you're going to see a painting by a French artist. Ten points if you can identify the artist. Claire Mixon. Cezanne. No, anyone like to buzz from Hartford? You may not confer one of you can buzz. Hartford Page. Manet. It is Edouard Manet's Monk in Prayer. <laughs> right, Hartford, you get the bon picture bonuses. That painting was believed to be inspired by de Zubarin's St Francis in Meditation. Your bonuses are three more paintings by Manet that closely reference well-known Spanish works. This time I need the name of the artist whose work is being referenced. Firstly, this is modelled on a portrait by which artist? Manet described the original as perhaps the most astonishing piece of painting that's ever been made. Uh, Velasquez. Velasquez is correct. Let's see the whole thing, the original. There it is. And secondly, as suggested by the critic Teofil Torre, whose work inspired this painting? El Greco. El Greco is correct. His Holy Trinity, as you can see there. And finally, this borrows heavily in both theme and composition from a work by which artist? Goya. Goya. It is Goya, yes, yes. <laughs> right, ten points for this. What alphanumeric designation links the Messier number of the Crab Nebula, a major route that runs near Luton, Leicester and Leeds, and the rapper born Lavon Alford? Hartford Tudor. M11. You don't want to buzz from Claire? Claire Nixon. 13. No, it's M1. Right, ten points for this. First published in 1855 and revised many times. Which collection of verse includes Song of Myself and I Sing the Book? Claire Granite. Leaves of Grass. Leaves of Grass is correct. <laughs> Claire, you get a set of bonuses on an SI prefix. Expressed in metric tons, what is one gigagram? A million. No, it's a thousand. Rounded to the nearest integer, how many decades is one gigasecond? Um, okay, it's 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 seconds. So it's 327 is one giga. Yeah. What do we want? Ten to nine. Thirty? Thirty. Three decades, thirty years. Correct. Finally, which body of the solar system has a diameter of about 1.4 gigameters? That's probably Jupiter. 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 No, it's the sun that's three and a half minutes ago and ten points for this. The name of which Roman god is the origin of terms for musical compositions depicting wild or hedonistic scenes, such as in Wagner's Tannhäuser and Sanson's Samson and Delilah? Claire Gurr. Dionysus. Anyone like to buzz from Hartford? Uh, Hartford Page. Bacchus. Bacchus is correct. You get a set of bonuses <laughs> on literary oxymorons, Hartford. In each case, name the poet who wrote the following lines. First from a 17th century work, yet from those flames no light, but rather darkness visible. Yeah, it does sound like Dunn. Yeah, Dunn. Uh, Dunn. No, it's John Milton describing hell. Second, from an 18th century work, damn with faint praise, a scent with civil leer, and without sneering, teach the rest to sneer. Yeah, Pope. Pope's not here, is it? Pope. Pope. It was Alexander Pope. Finally, from a mid 19th century work, faith unfaithful kept him falsely true. Come on. Uh, Browning. No, it's Tennyson. Ten points for this. Servus and Dammer are among the genera of what ruminant animal? Uh, 
Native British species have the common names red, roe, and... Clangor! Deer. Deer is correct. <laughs> Three questions on the events of 1918. In which present-day country is the city of Brest, formerly known as Brest-Litovsk? It saw the signing of two peace treaties in the early months of 1918. Belarus. Correct. Thanks. The monarch of which country granted asylum to Kaiser Wilhelm II in November 1918? Um, the UK. No, it was Holland. Also in late 1918, an assembly of delegates at Albert Julia proclaimed the union of Transylvania and which country? Romania. Romania. Romania is correct. Ten points for this. <laughs> Listen carefully. Answer promptly. With triangle PQR, where angle R is equal to 30 degrees, what is the value of sine P cosine Q plus cosine P sine Q? Hartford Tudor. One. No, anyone want to buzz from Claire? Claire Gunner. Zero. No, it's half. Ten points for this. What two-word English name denotes both a waterway around 1,800 kilometres long linking Beijing with southeast China and a thoroughfare of Venice spanned by the Real... Claire Grand Canal. Correct. <laughs> These are the set of bonuses. They're on a shared term. Germaine Clement and Brett McKenzie are the members of which New Flight Zealand Conquest. musical comedy duo? Flight of the Concords. Correct. The Flight of the Earls is often regarded as a turning point in Irish history and occurred in the first decade of which century? In the 18th. No, sorry, the 19th century. 19th. No, it's the 17th. Oh, the Flight of the Bumblebee is an orchestral interlude in the tale of Tsar Sultan, an opera of 1899 by which Russian Rimsky composer? Rimsky-Korsakov. Correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. What common surname links a paramour of the future King George IV nicknamed Perdita, the US author of Housekeeping and Gilead, and the Irish president from 19... Claire Greenwich. Robinson. Correct. Nice, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it couldn't have got much closer than that, really, Hartford. I mean, just on the last question, it went. But you'd, you'd had a convincing lead for most of the contest. We might see you back as one of the highest-scoring losers. Who knows? But thank you very much for joining us. Claire, well, you left it... <laughs> you left it as bad as late as you possibly could leave it. But congratulations to you, and we should look forward to seeing you in the next round of the contest. I hope you can join us next time for another first-round match. But until then, it's goodbye from Hartford College, Oxford. Bye. Bye. It's goodbye from Clare College, Cambridge. Bye. Bye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>